Precision racing is a deadly sport, and the Sydney to Hobart is the toughest of them all. For serious sailors, it's the Holy Grail, the Everest of the sea. David Peskid, a Hobart veteran, has taken it on 17 times. People die doing this, and you better get a bloody right, because if you don't, you might die, or more tragically, somebody else might. So don't, don't fuck with this. And this year, he's attempting the unthinkable again, because David's crew are disabled. This year, David's got an even bigger challenge. He's missing key positions on his yacht, and he's looking for a handful of disabled people with no sailing experience to become new members of his crew. A week ago, I would have watched the start, and that would have been it. Now it could be in it. That race where people died, this is really, really dangerous. First, he'll need to find them. Stand there, get your feet locked on that okay. other side. Then, he'll need to train them. This will save your bloody lives! Then, he'll race them. Guys on the rail, listen to the call! In a race that has claimed many boats and many lives, will they survive? Can they win? I fucking ask for fucking help! Sailors with disabilities are a motley crew of experienced seamen with various bits missing or not working. Today, their leader and skipper of the boat, David Peskid, has his core crew out for some off-boat training in Pittwater on Sydney's northern beaches. Come on, let's see you do this. I hope you haven't got all day. Let's get a wiggle on. They may not look it, but these guys are a highly competitive racing team with a variety of disabilities like blindness, spina bifida, congenital diseases, deformity, and a double leg amputee. Put your four wheel drive legs on, Bertie. David's definition of disability is anything that puts you at a serious disadvantage in society. He himself is severely dyslexic and cannot read or write. This is really weird group because it's not the things that are the same about us. Um, it is our differences that keeps us together and makes us understand our circumstance. Let's go steady. It's Remember, steady. this is about team building. Come on, Radhi. It is a little bit stronger on this boat because we know that we have weaknesses um, in, in amongst ourselves. Um, the, some people are strong in some sections and some people are weak in some sections. The idea is to find what your ability is and to work on that. Thanks, buddy. If somebody can't wind that sail in fast enough, then somebody, instead of just pushing them out of the way and saying, let me do it, they will put their hands on top of the other person's hands and they will grind with them. Someone back up, Dave Leslie, please. We give each other a hand, we give each other a, a foot, we give each other a leg, we give each other a where other people's eyes, where other people's ears. Good. Thank you. Okay. Al Grundy is one of David's longest serving crew members on the yacht. He runs everything below deck. He's the engine room. I caught polio at the age of one. Uh, I don't really know how I caught it. Its effect on me has been <laughs> very interesting. Um, I, I think it's probably even beneficial, you know. I, mean, I think it's changed my life. I think I might have been a real dickhead if I didn't get polio. I don't do walking particularly well, so I'm not going to be a marathon runner and I don't ride push bikes. And this thing gives me an opportunity to sit on something that moves itself and uh, I get to use my upper body. I love the opportunity to be with a whole bunch of people all working together, trusting each other, going someplace very slowly, getting wet, cold and sick. Yep. Don't tell me about your problems, Bertie. Get your ass on top of the hill. I want to see your head too, Bertie. You're hiding under the undergrowth there. You might not be trying hard enough. Come on. Another of David's long-standing crew members is Albert Lee. Up on deck, he works the front half of the boat. 
I'm a bilateral above knee amputee. In other words, I've lost both legs amputated above the knees. I was an optometry student. I was going through university at the time and uh, late at night, being a bit tired, I was standing next to the train door and uh, that was the last thing I remember. And uh, when I awoke, I was in hospital and they'd announced to me that I've lost both my legs. Oh, we all develop our own techniques in, in, in how we do things. Uh, my advantage, so to put it, is that my centre of gravity is lower to the deck and so that I'm not likely to get hit by a swinging boom. Being down low and not having uh, lower limbs, I can actually scoot across the deck quite rapidly and that's where I get around pretty quick. You want me to do it? What do you reckon? Oh, yeah, I can do it. Go for it, son. That's what I like to hear. Okay, we just need to go up. Sure you yours, baby. It's got your name on it. Take a leg off. Jesus. I mean, gee, you know, I, I, I just, how do you get that kind of determination? How do you do that? Where's that come from? Can't help it. Get up there. But there's, there's something that's, that, that's in a disabled person that, that an able-bodied person doesn't have. It's... They've had to deal with an awful lot of situations inside of themselves. They've had to deal with emotions and, and thoughts that nobody else has had to deal with. Anybody that, that is disabled knows exactly what I'm talking about. Anybody who isn't disabled uh, could lose a leg one day and, and then they'd find out pretty quickly that uh, there's an awful lot of things that you have to... There's, a, there's an inner strength that you gain. Well done, mate. Come on. Well done, buddy. Well done. Come on, All right, I'll, I'll go down back. Help him, guys. Yeah. Oh, What's your right left shoulder there? Yeah. Bertie, don't hang yourself with that rope, mate. Albert and Al Grundy are just two sailors amongst an extraordinary core crew. And the man whose vision brought them together is skipper David Peskett. We call ourselves the Cripple Express. We are the Cripple Express. But man, when, what a joke. I sail with the most able bunch of people on the planet. No one, no one on this planet. There are no skill boats on this planet that I know of that sail better than my guys. I love sailing with David and, and that's the reason I'm still here 15 years on. There are times when I want to wring his neck, uh, but I, there's no one in the world I would, I would be out in the ocean with than him. But there are times, even out there, that I wish he wasn't there. How would I describe me? I'm impatient. Nothing happens fast enough. God, fuck me, guys, on that brace, will you? Why the fuck? You want to bring the tough love down? I think I'm kind. I think so. I'd like to think I was a kind person. David, do not fucking look up! Wind this fucker! I mean, that doesn't mean I, I tolerate fools. I don't tolerate fools. It's a down! Lady, get your fucking ass on the front of me! A lot of people say I'm cranky. I am cranky. I mean, seriously, how the fuck do you feel about that? Oh, you old please! Fuck! Jesus Christ! David Peskid probably does more than anybody. He's, he does more than God in, in all of this. He puts his boat up, he puts his life up, he puts everything on hold and gives his heart, soul, blood, sweat and tears to it all the time. I mean, you see David all the time and he might be yelling and screaming, but he does that because he's responsible for everybody, everybody. This crew of misfits have won their fair share of yacht races. They've even won their division in the Sydney to Hobart twice. But this year, the task is a daunting one, and the long road ahead will become their biggest challenge yet. 
you blokes knock me out. Every time I do anything with you fellas, I come away thinking, geez, you know, bloody hell, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I mean that. Thanks for coming. See you on the boat Monday night. Three months out from the race, and David needs to fill some key positions on the boat. But to keep things interesting, he's looking for disabled people with no sailing experience. They'll first need to overcome their disabilities. But more importantly, they'll have less than 12 weeks to learn to sail before taking on the nautical equivalent of Mount Everest. Sydney to Hobart is arguably the toughest ocean race. I've got a fantastic core team that have been around now for 15 years. But this year, we're going to be looking for some new blood. We've got to train a new crew, some new people who have never sailed before. We've got 12 weeks to do it in. And we want to win. It's a really big ask. And frankly, I'm not sure if we can do it. David's call for new blood has been answered, and eight new novice sailors have come down to begin the gruelling racing trials in the hope of getting a ride to Hobart. For the next couple of months, David will put the new recruits to the test. They'll race alongside his core crew in the highly competitive warm-up races, where their skills and attitude will be put to the test. In the end, only the best sailors will be taken to Hobart. Welcome to Ocean Racing. Welcome to what could be three days of your life that you'll remember for the rest of your life. It has that kind of power. Some are going to go and some are going to stay. You might go next year, but this year there'll be some miss out. We've got a nickname around the town. They yep. call us the Cripple yep. Express. Yep. We've earned that name and we're pretty proud about it. So I want people that own their disabilities. I don't want anybody on my boat that is owned by their disability. Dragging that baggage about around behind you about your disability, it just slows you down. And it slows my boat down. And I don't want that. All right? The first thing I want you guys to understand is that people die doing this. It happens. Recently, a couple of my colleagues, friends of mine, they both died in a yacht. It just was a, a simple Friday night around Flinders Island and home, down in Wollongong and back. This is probably one of the most dangerous things. It is extreme, extreme sport. We will go through, if we hit bad weather, you will have blue water going over the decks of this boat. There is no worse place to be. Um, I mean, frankly, I think you guys are mad. Um, but yeah, I guess you can all plead ignorance. The aura of the Sydney to Hobart has brought them to David and his Cripple Express. But what they're really here for is a chance to push themselves through their limitations and beyond their disabilities. Well, listen, Bart, I'm doing a body count there and I can't see any bits missing, mate. So why, why are you on the boat, son? I can't see. Not much good at readings. Um, navigating, I guess, but I can tell which direction the wind's coming from. Uh, my name's Fiona. I've got MS. I've had it for 20... I was diagnosed 28 years ago. My name's Paul. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong, but no. can't move my left arm and a bit of trouble moving my left leg from a stroke in 87 when I was 26. What happened? Just uh, I had a brain tumour, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's a battle. People don't realise that people with disabilities, what they're up against. They just ride them off, they can't do things, and to go in this race would just show people... It sounds like you've got a bit of attitude going there, son. Yeah, mate, I oh, am. Yeah. Good on you. My name's Liesl, and I'm a paraplegic, a very incomplete paraplegic, as a result of a bike accident 20 years ago tomorrow. Woo-woo, celebration uh, we hardly party. count. We hardly count. You ask anyone when their accident was, and it's pretty clear in their life, because yeah, things change dramatically. Yep, that's the day. Well, I hope that would be a bit like that, too, you know? It's like, 
you'd measure things from Hobart. Mate, my heart is racing just thinking about yeah. it. Like, if anything, vote me off because I think I'm too excited. Like, I just think <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> thrill and the opportunity that's arisen. Like, I, how lucky are all of us to even be presented with this opportunity? Yeah, exactly. Mm. All, right. all right, guys. I'll um, see you all at training. Right. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure if these people really understand what they're getting themselves into, you know. Sitting around the bar at the CYC, hearing the old fellas talk about the Hobart and the romance of it all is one thing. It's a different thing altogether. When you're in the middle of Bass Strait, you've got blue water coming over, it's the second or third day out, you haven't eaten, you haven't been going to go to the loo, the whole world's turning upside down, bouncing around, there's three foot of water inside the boat. It's a disgusting place to be, nobody wants to be, and I don't really think these guys quite have had, I don't think these guys have quite got a handle on that idea. Uh, and sometime now I've got to sit them down and get, get them to focus up a little bit on the reality of the race, not the romance of the race. The ocean can be the most fearsome thing on the earth and it can be the most beautiful thing, you know, it can rock you to sleep of a night time. And man, and other times you're bloody just, you got, when it's coming at you, when the needles, when the spray is, is coming at you so hard that it feels like someone's punching a fork in your face. It can do both and it can do them within 12 hours. David knows this from personal experience. He and his disabled crew sailed to Hobart and won their division in 1998. It was one of the deadliest yacht races in history. In that year, six people lost their lives to the giant waves. Of the 115 yachts that started the race, only 44 made it to Hobart. Five boats sank and 55 people were winched from the raging ocean in the heart of a vicious storm. This is dangerous. People die doing this. So yeah, it is scary. And you are putting your ass in the sling. And you better get it bloody right. Because if you don't, you might die, or more tragically, somebody else might. So don't don't fuck with this. You could get hurt, and somebody else could. To earn a spot on a Sailors with Disabilities crew for the Sydney to Hobart, the new recruits will have to pull out all stops to impress their skipper, David Peskin. Over the next couple of months, they'll be given the chance to race alongside some of David's core crew members. But only the best will get the chance of a lifetime to become crew members on the 2009 Sailors with Disabilities Sydney to Hobart campaign. John DeMandel has come down from Newcastle to try out for the crew, and although he has had no sailing experience, doing this race has been yes. a lifelong dream for him. You're going to pull it out. Pull it out, and it'll drop. And, and it's double. Well, most people with my eye condition have lost their sight through the younger ages, uh, where I'm nearly 50, and I'm still doing quite well. But I can't give you a time frame. I know maybe six months, 12 months, um, two years, I'll be I'll be using a white stick and it could come earlier. It's the sort of thing you cannot put a time frame on, but going by the last five years, um, I have to start considering and planning my life a little bit different to what I do now. I'm, I'm not on a lifetime scale, I'm on a, a, a vision timeline where I want to try and see as much in my life as I can. So right up on the bow, it's pretty To sail out of Sydney Harbour on the 26th of um, December this year and being able to see you know Sydney Harbour bubble with you know the excitement of the Sydney to Hobart and then sail into the the Derwent you know a couple of days later with my eyesight as it is now would be just just fantastic. Paul Dron has flown in from northern New South Wales. Is that the blue one he suffered a stroke 25 side? years ago and is still coming to terms with life in his new body. It's hard to describe, you know, when half your body just stops working. You can't imagine it, just like I can't imagine what it's like for someone blind. It's until it's one of those things, till it happens to you, you just don't know. And it's really hard. People just look at you because you walk a bit different or whatever, and straight away they judge you. 
There'll obviously be people that have done more sailing than me, but um, I'm hoping that uh, my sailing experience will come back to me and uh, I might be able to take part. People without a disability would find it a challenge, so to do it with a disability would be even more of a reward. Kirky, you're doing Maine, David doing Traveller, Liesl uh, on the rail, John, yes. you're with Kirk. So this one here, keep it up here. Yes. So that At the back of the boat, back it's the front. blind leading the vision impaired, as Kirk Watson, the mainsail trimmer, shows John the ropes. Like that. Gotcha. Yep. And if your hand's on that, then it's going to break fingers. Gotcha. As the boat heads out, the beauty of the setting sun on Sydney Harbour hides the intensely competitive nature of these warm-up races. The weather starts to turn. An electric atmosphere fills the sky and settles on the crew below. For the new sailors, this is where the journey begins. This will be their baptism of fire. face a massive learning curve. 24 lines, 7 winches, 15 different sails. It takes 14 crew members to power this 54-foot, purebred, ocean racing machine. It all happens all at once. It's, it's heads up, let's get into it. And the boat's on, it's leaning over, and you're thinking, oh, OK, I'm not used to that. And there's boats six feet, ten feet away from you. Ten minutes into the race, and Kirk is already having to push John hard. Go, 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 go. One, one, one. Go the other way, go the other way. Oh, oh. thanks. Don't look around. Yeah, right. On. Concentrate on our boat. Right on. Kirk got pranked with me and said, stop looking around, just start grinding. But yeah, he sort of gave me the drum on what to do, and I, um, yeah, worked out pretty well. Head down, ass up, and away you go. In the middle of the boat, Liesl Tesh, Paul Dron, and Mark Whiteman have started the race on the rail and realise very quickly that this is no pleasure cruise. Just getting from rail to rail in the tax is proving to be a challenge for some. Oh, getting my foot hooked in ropes and caught on grab rails and hitting the head, and it was just rough. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what my initial job was, but one of my main jobs was just dragging Paul from one side to the other, so just grabbing whatever part of his limbs I could find and pulling him to the other side of the boat, upside down or right way up. Storm, the howling wind, the rain, the lightning, the clouds coming across from the south, wow. I mean, just to see a massive big cruise ship come down, a tall ship's coming the other way, another boat like a metre away, there's a lot of adrenaline, and I don't mind it when there's a lot of things going on. Even though it was a disappointing middle-of-the-field finish for the yacht, for the new sailors, it's been a real eye-opener. I mean, and what a perfect night. Why would you not participate in something like that if you got the opportunity? That was the greatest sail I've ever been on. It was just unreal. A little bit physically demanding, but the thrill took away the pain. It was great. That was great. That was really, really good. It was, it was a rush. The teamwork that was going on, that was just great. That was inspiring, actually, to, to be a part of that. But with just 12 weeks to the start of the Sydney to Hobart, David's realised he's got his work cut out. Yeah. Some of these guys think it's a bit of a picnic, I think. You think it's all good fun, you know. It's not going to be much fun when you're jumping off the top of a two and three metre sea and 30 knots of wind rolling around. 
I think they think it's an event, you know, sort of a box. You've got to tick, well, that's not what SWD's about. You know, we're, we're going to have out to race. We've won. We want to win again. We want to win our division overall. So I've got to knock that attitude out of them pretty smart. Next time, training begins in earnest. If someone says heads, you pull your head in, go low. The crew sails into the eye of a storm. And David tells some of the hopefuls they're not going to Hobart. I'm going to have to cut some adrift. <laughs>